Thank you, Madam Speaker. Edmund Burke was prophetic in his time as he weighed in on both the American and French revolutions. He was widely renowned for his stances that were not accepted by many of his contemporaries, but became seen for their wisdom in the long run and are now much appreciated by posterity. One such precept is the strong argument to protect established institutions from radical ideas which seek to undermine our form of Western civilization, being wary of abstract theories and careless ideas while remaining grounded in experience. This is the frame that he applied to policymaking as a member of parliament. Our established institution of education here in Michigan is one that I must admit has caused me to wrestle with abstract ideas toward dismantling the institution as they stemmed from valid frustrations with the various injustices of the system. But it is too immature and simply too lazy to just rage against the machine. On the contrary, we should take much time to know our enemy. It is not the institution. It is not the people within the institution. Our enemy, enemies are the barriers, often been put in place unwittingly, which inhibit well-intended reformers across this state who are standing in the classrooms right now. The answer is not to tear our education systems down, nor place the blame on others, but to free up the well-intended reformers from within, while then allowing parents to choose the program that these reformers have created that is best for their child. The answer is to free up those who have the experience or are willing to gain the experience necessary to make corrections accordingly. This budget adheres to such time-tested precepts in many ways. It frees us up down the road by paying off almost $2 billion in cumbersome pension debt. It is fiscally sound as it sets aside almost $700 million in the School Aid Stabilization Fund to bring about more certainty as days of economic uneasiness loom. It opens the doors widely to new talent, such as honorably discharged veterans, providing a sincerely appealing invite for them to come into the trenches of the classroom now alongside veteran teachers in support and mentee roles to then become teachers themselves as they seek to uh, continue their service to our country in the most fulfilling of ways that only a classroom experience can offer. It allows parents to choose the right teachers for their learners, who then can be compensated generously for their services and talent while addressing summer learning needs. It provides funding for more transparency to help mitigate some of the hostile energy that we see at our school board meetings across the state. And it brings in immense air support to address mental health needs, with emphasis on supporting the idea of helping kids get plugged into something within their school and or community, whether that be an exercise regiment, sports team, or chess club, whatever paving a path for them to allow their skills and talents to be developed in ways that they see actually matter. Madam Speaker, this budget is one that upholds our well-established system of education while allowing those experienced from within to address the ever-pressing challenges that we face as a nation. Lastly, this budget also makes a bold stance to uphold another well-established institution, and that is the institution of women's sports. It is true that an individual that God made as a boy has distinct physical advantages over an individual that God made as a girl in sports. To point this out, no one should be ashamed. And to call the defense of this important and well-established axiom cruel and to whip up sentiment that connotes bigotry or intolerance in order to gain political power is particularly egregious. I encourage a yes vote on this budget that significantly betters our established institutions as we have the backs of our young girls in sports and all the educators who devote their lives to providing a free and appropriate education. Thank you, Madam Speaker.